Hello and welcome to Make Aesthetics. This is part two of my making of a dress form. If you're coming from part one, welcome back. If you haven't seen part one, it covers the fabric portion of the dress form, making the mock-up, checking the pattern, and the final construction of the dress form. This part will cover how I made the stand, why I chose to ignore bootstraps and instructions, and the costs of this exact build. All materials used are listed in the link document below. I put links to all the ones I use that the listings were still there. On that note, let's get started. I start by dismantling the mechanics tool that I'm using in place of the coat rack that Bootstraps Instructions said to use. I wanted to use this stool because it can hold a large amount of weight, be raised and lowered, has wheels, and has a tray at the bottom. All things that I think would be useful to have. Because I have to attach a dowel rod to this chair base, and it's a bit wobbly, I made a flange from a scrap of wood. This particular piece turned out to be one of the hardest pieces of wood I have ever worked with, and it took about forever to drill through it. Once the wood pieces for the base were finished, I stained the dowel rod. Even with the flange loosely sitting around the dowel, it was still pretty wobbly, so I secured the flange to the base. I decided that I wanted the seat to act as a giant pincushion, so I used the old seat cover as a guide to create the new cover. It was at this point that I realized that covering a cushion was similar to stretching a canvas for painting. I began stapling the fabric to the base, starting at one side, flipping to the other, and then working at center marks to get even tension. The base is now finished. The sponge I'm using is actually a high-density foam used for wheelchair cushions. I bought it to reupholster a chair I have, and I realized I would have enough for this project as well.
after that, it was just following the instructions to stuff and assemble the body. is finished. I really enjoyed making this project, and then the fact that I get a dress form that's my measurements with a fun fabric for a fraction of the cost I've seen online to order one, <laughs> it's a win in my book. One of the things that I find most discouraging about DIY is the cost of materials. This was not the cheapest build I could have done. I bought my materials with multiple projects in mind, so the total cost is much higher than the amount that actually went into this project. This is the link document, and as you can see, the project has roughly $190 worth of materials put into it. This counts the mock-up materials as well. I already had such things as screws, wood, etc., which took the actual cost of materials bought for this project down to roughly $170. I don't want anyone to feel discouraged from creating by this price, though. So while I'm showing what this exact build cost, know that on average, this project is generally much more reasonable. I just got really picky with what I wanted for it. There are always ways to make a build better fit your budget. By switching out the fabric for cheaper fabric, or using old pillows for their stuffing, thrifting a coat rack, etc. Question. Yes. If you did it again, what would you do differently? So that is my uh, lovely stitching sibling, and she helps me a lot. I will be replacing the bottom car inner cardboard piece because the amount of stuffing that I needed to make this the, how firm I wanted it to be um, push, like, bent the cardboard out of shape. I have some, like, building materials left over from other projects and, like, I, I think it's called, like, masonite. It's super thin but, like, sturdy. And I'm gonna replace that with masonite. There's a few things, like, on the pattern I would adjust because, like, I'm very thin this way. More of my stuff is in width. And this is more circular all around. I would adjust it a little bit more for that. I did try and like squish it and like move the padding around as much as possible. Yeah, I think that's that's what I would change. What are some skills you learned in doing this? Things you didn't know beforehand, but doing this taught you. <laughs> Definitely aligning pattern pieces. <laughs> Cause I got like they were supposed to be aligned, but I didn't realize like. They have to like sort of work the curves as you sew, which as a beginner is something you don't think about and since I was hand sewing, it's a lot easier to do when you're hand sewing. At least so far for me, I haven't worked much on a machine. I also learned how to, since I, I made this entirely by hand, like the mock-up was done on a machine but the final form I stitched completely by hand with back stitches and then these are cross stitches for the pink lines. So I learned how to make even and tiny stitches on this project. Really good skill to learn, pick up, and develop. Oh, I also learned how to put in a chunky zipper because I can't do invisible zippers. They always break on me. Did I learn anything else? Hmm, I feel like I did. What did I learn? Oh! This is something that was like, really didn't make sense to me when I was reading the instructions. But the inner structure needs to be attached to the outer piece. And I thought that was just like, putting the two seam lines together, just like. So the outer piece, it has the inner structure along the center front and center back of it. 
and I thought it was just like attaching the two seam lines, that sort of thing. But when I did that, it like buckled weirdly. So what I ended up doing is opening up the seams. So like these were the seams for the outer shell and the inner piece. So I like opened them up and like flattened them together and sewed on both sides of uh, this seam. So like they're stitching on this side and they're stitching on this side uh, to attach the inner pieces. And I think that made it a little bit stronger and I don't know if that's what the instructions were explaining, but that's what I did and it became a lot smoother right here for me and maybe that's what they meant, but I'm a beginner, I don't know anything. <laughs> and there we have it. There's not much else I can say, but I want to thank you for watching and supporting this channel. I see now that we have a hundred of you guys, so that's super exciting. Uh, I thought it would take a lot longer to have so many people interested in what I do, so thank you so much. I'm excited to show you more in the coming months, and if you want real-time updates, you can follow me at Mika underscore aesthetics on Instagram. Thank you for sticking around, and I will see you next time. Toodles! <laughs> oh, I have a charcuterie board that's just like sitting next to me. <laughs> because I'm so hungry. I've been doing stuff all day. Wait. Oh my god, I can put it off screen over here. That makes me so much happier. If you want to follow me in real time, that was a weird say to say. English, work for me. My first language. You should work. Uh, I would line the pieces a lot better. Are you eating just vegetable off a spoon? <laughs> Oh, these are pants, by the way. <laughs> Secret pants with pockets. <laughs> right? But yeah, I got more plants. And if you guys want me to like do plant updates every time I get plants, I can just show you them. <laughs> Cause they make me happy and I hope they make you happy too. What number spoon of Vegemite is that? <laughs> I don't know why I'm still hugging this, but I just can't stop.